Imagine being gifted something precious, but never being able to enjoy it. Not because you don't want it, you're simply not allowed. Humans are designed to want what we can have. Curiosity would gnaw at you. The temptation would eventually drive you mad until you succumb to your desires. I do want to know what it tastes like. Zeus gave Pandora a box as a wedding gift, but told her never to open it. She, of course, couldn't resist. This is what happened. Greek mythology is overflowed with tales of gods and goddesses interfering with mortals and their many affairs, often by introducing legendary objects of unimaginable power. This could be anything. A golden apple sparkling a decade-long war over a beauty contest, or even common things such as a box. A simple box that causes all hell to break loose. The story starts with a woman named Pandora. Everyone's heard a reference to Pandora's box in the context of leaving something alone. The origins of Pandora as a character in mythology originated in the works of the ancient Greek poet Hesiod, first in his poem Theogony, and later in his works, Works and Days, written around the year 700 BC. Though Pandora is not named explicitly in Theogony, the poem talks about a female figure believed to be her. According to this work, she was created by Order of Zeus as a punishment for humanity in response to the actions of Prometheus. Prometheus, the son of the Titan Lapidus and one of the Oceanid nymphs. In the early days of humanity, tensions between mortals and immortals were high. One significant point of conflict being the possession of fire. Zeus had withdrawn fire from humans as punishment after Prometheus tricked him into accepting a sacrificial offering that seemed valuable but that turned out to be just the bones of a bull. This trick allowed humans to keep the meat for themselves while offering only the inedible parts to the gods. Now, anyone who's familiar with Zeus's personality knows that is a big no-no. Zeus did not appreciate being tricked, so he hid fire from humanity as a punishment. However, Prometheus deliberately went against Zeus's judgment. He stole fire back from Zeus and returned it to mortals. Zeus got furious and unleashed his wrath on Prometheus. He sentenced the immortal god to a fate worse than death. Prometheus was bound in chains to a rock, where each day an eagle would come and eat his liver. Every night, his liver would regenerate, and the torturous cycle would begin all over again. Prometheus was eventually freed from this torment by the Greek hero Heracles, but he endured immense suffering while chained to that rock. So what does Pandora have to do with all this? In her first appearance in Theogony, Pandora was created as part of Zeus's resolve to punish mankind by any means necessary. In an act of retribution, Zeus ordered Hephaestus, the god of artisans and blacksmiths, to craft the world's first human woman from Earth. She would be beautiful, but bring great suffering to humanity through her descendants. Hesiod expressed in his poem that from her comes the lineage of women and the female kind. From her springs the deadly race and tribe of women who dwell among mortal men to their great detriment, not as companions in hateful poverty, but only in times of wealth. In his poem, Works and Days, Hesiod revisited the myth of the first woman expanding it into the version that is most common today. In this version, she received a series of gifts from the gods, each contributing to her final form. Hephaestus molded her from the earth, Athena taught her weaving and needlework, and Aphrodite shed grace upon her head and cruel longing and cares that weary the limbs. That doesn't sound like a nice gift. Hermes endowed her with a shameless mind and a deceitful nature as well as the power of speech, specifically the ability to lie and use crafty words. Moving on, Athena gave her clothing. Patho, the goddess of persuasion and the graces, adorned her with necklaces and jewels, while the Hore, 
the goddesses of the seasons, placed a crown of plants upon her head. Then Hermes gave her the gift of her name, Pandora, meaning all gifted. Hesiod tells us in his poem, All they who dwelt on Olympus gave each a gift, a plague to men who eat bread. In addition to creating Pandora, Zeus gave her a mysterious box, the contents of which were known only to him. It's worth noting that Pandora wasn't only a gift to humanity, she was also intended for Prometheus' brother, Epimetheus. Despite Prometheus warning him not to accept anything from Zeus, Epimetheus welcomed the beautiful Pandora as his wife and allowed her to bring the box along. After that, Pandora opened the box, releasing all sorts of evil into the world, filling the earth and sea with suffering. Only one entity remained inside as we hear from the Asiad. Hope remained there, in an unbreakable home, within under the rim of the great jar, and did not fly out of the door. For ere that, the lid of the jar stopped her, by the will of the ages holding Zeus, who gathers the clouds. As you can see from the original description, Pandora's box was in fact a jar and not a box at all. The vessel given to Pandora was called a pithos, a large clay jar primarily used for storing wine, oil, or grain. It could also be used in burial practices, and some were believed to contain souls. Historians believe that the word was mistranslated as box at some point, and this mistranslation simply endured. There are in fact many versions of this story, though Hesiod's version is the first and most well known. In some, Pandora desperately tried to stop the evils from escaping the jar by slamming the lid shut, but it was too late. By the time she got it closed, only hope remained inside, leaving the world filled with evils and hopelessness. In these other versions, Pandora is innocent, deliberately tempted by Zeus and the other gods with the gift of a vessel she is warned never to open. Her curiosity gets the better of her, and all of humanity suffers as a result. You know what they say, curiosity killed the cat. There are other variations of the story as well, some that don't place any blame on Pandora at all. There are versions in which Pandora's husband, Epimetheus, opened the jar. And while we're on the subject of Pandora's husband, Epimetheus and Pandora had a daughter named Pyrrha, who was also a victim of Zeus's wrath. And the story for that, I bet most of you have heard before. Pyrrha, married to Deucalion, the son of Prometheus, witnessed Zeus's decision to end the current age of man with a massive storm to flood the world. Fortunately, Prometheus foresaw the flood and instructed Deucalion to build an ark where he and Pyrrha could wade out the storm. Deucalion and Pyrrha survived the flood, with their ark eventually landing on Mount Parnassus after the waters receded. However, they were the only humans to make it through the deluge. Somehow, they would have to find a way to repopulate the entire planet. Now, I know what you must be thinking at this point. This story sounds an awful lot like the biblical story of Noah's Ark. It's deeply interesting to me that every ancient civilization, religion or mythology has a flood myth. Could that be just a coincidence? Or do we have a shared past that has endured through various stories and myths but that are in fact memories? That's a topic for another video. But let me know what you think about that. It should be noted that while Pandora's box was actually a jar, there is another Greek myth involving a box that brought misfortune to the one who opened it. This story is about Psyche, a beautiful mortal woman and the beloved of Eros, the god of desire. Now before you bash me in the comments, I know Eros is actually one of the primordial beings, but some myths paint him as being the son of Aphrodite. Which version do you incline to? Primordial being or son of Aphrodite? Comment below. Aphrodite subjected Psyche to a series of difficult trials to punish her for her relationship with Eros, including gathering water from the river Styx. For her final task, Psyche was given a golden box to take into the underworld and presented to Persephone. She was supposed to fill the box with a bit of Persephone's beauty and bring it back to Aphrodite. After successfully venturing into the underworld, Psyche found Persephone and conveyed Aphrodite's request. Happy to help, Persephone filled the box. 
However, as Psyche returned to complete her task, she was overwhelmed with curiosity about the contents of the box. When she opened it to take a peek at the beauty inside, she found no beauty, but instead a dark cloud that enveloped her, plunging her into a deep coma-like sleep from which only a god could awaken her. Some scholars believe that the transition from Pandora's jar to a box resulted from the stories of Pandora and Psyche being mixed up, eventually incorporating aspects of both myths to form the story we best know today. In any case, whether a box or a jar, either by the hand of Pandora or her husband, the moral of the story is, some things are better left untouched, and withstanding instant gratification can be the difference between a good outcome or a complete catastrophe. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tale. If you watched until the end, I will go out on a limb and say you probably enjoyed what you saw. So please like, subscribe, comment, share the video with someone else. It's a very small button for you and a gigantic leap for my channel. Until the next tale, farewell and may the gods smile upon you.